What if I told you there is a plant that feeds more people per acre than corn? A plant that grows without irrigation, without fertilizer, without tilling the soil. A plant that produces food every season of the year. Starch, vegetables, flour, oil, even sugar. And for 30,000 years, it may have been the most important survival food our species ever relied on. What if I told you this plant still surrounds us today, growing quietly at the edges of ponds, rivers, marshes, and lakes, and almost no one sees it? Not because it failed us, but because it succeeded too well. Our story begins far earlier than most agricultural histories dare to reach. Not 5,000 years ago, not 10,000, but nearly 30,000 years into the past. Long before cities, before temples, before grains were domesticated, humans in Ice Age Europe and North Asia survived by harvesting wetlands. Archaeologists examining grinding stones from Paleolithic sites discovered residue again and again. Not from wheat, not from barley, not from oats, but from typha, the cattail, a plant that anchored entire communities during winter scarcity. Its roots, rich in starch, could be ground into flour. Its young shoots were eaten like asparagus. Its pollen, bright golden and fragrant, contained more protein than modern cereal grains. Its flower spikes, when roasted, tasted like corn dipped in honey. Every part of the cattail offered something. Starch from rhizomes, greens from shoots, protein from pollen, oil from seeds, sugar from stems, medicine from roots, and fiber from leaves for baskets, mats, roofs, and even clothing. For ancient humans surrounded by long winters and unpredictable landscapes, cattails were not weeds. They were survival technology, a living pantry that regenerated itself year after year. While grains demanded labor, cattails offered abundance freely. And that is where the story begins to twist. Cattails grow in wetlands, the transitional zones between land and water that early civilizations depended on for survival. These were the richest ecosystems on the planet, full of birds, fish, amphibians, and plants offering both protein and carbohydrates. In a single acre of cattail marsh, you could harvest three times more edible calories than corn, four times more protein than rice, and dozens of additional uses, with no replanting, no plowing, and no fertilizers. It was a biological miracle, so effective at producing food that even droughts barely touched it so resilient that fire and frost almost never destroyed it, so regenerative that harvest actually stimulated new growth. In ancient North America, cattails fed indigenous tribes for thousands of years. In Siberia and Mongolia, they were winter food stores. In China and Southeast Asia, they grew along every riverbank, woven into daily life. In Africa's Rift Valley, they were harvested by lakeside communities season after season. Humanity ate cattails far longer than it has eaten corn, wheat, or rice. But there was a problem, not ecological, not nutritional, but political. Cattails belonged to no one. You couldn't fence a marsh. You couldn't own a wetland. You couldn't charge rent on abundance. And that was intolerable to the world being built. The turning point came not because cattails failed, but because economies changed. Around the 1700s and the 1800s, Western governments began building what economists politely call scarcity-based agricultural systems, systems where farmers bought seeds, fertilizers, tools, and later machines, chemicals, and patents. Industries need dependence. Monocultures need control. Markets need scarcity. But cattails created something else entirely, ecological abundance. They required no inputs, no ownership, and no profit extraction. 
So in the 19th century, governments across Europe and North America launched one of the largest ecological transformations in human history. They drained the wetlands. They drained them for farmland. They drained them for housing. They drained them to control mosquitoes. They drained them because wild food that grew for free was classified as backwards. In the United States alone, over 50 million acres of wetlands were destroyed. In Europe, an even greater percentage vanished. Marshes that had fed humanity for tens of thousands of years were converted into fields for monoculture crops like corn and wheat, crops that needed fertilizer, labor, plowing, and money. Foods that grew themselves were outlawed. Foods that required work were rewarded. By the 1920s, cattails were no longer considered food. They were labeled weeds, pests, invasive marsh trash. And yet, the cattail did not die. It simply stepped aside, watching as the world built fragile food systems on land that once grew abundance without asking anything in return. Fast forward to today. Our soils are exhausted. Our rivers run dry. Our food systems depend on fertilizers mined from the earth and chemicals synthesized in factories. And crops once abundant like corn, soy, and rice now struggle under heat waves and drought. But cattails remain green. They still grow in polluted ponds, in forgotten ditches, in drained lakes slowly refilling themselves. They rise even after fire, even after drought, even after diesel spills. Modern researchers now call cattails one of the best carbon sequestering plants on Earth, one of the best natural water filters, one of the most nutrient efficient starch sources, one of the most productive plants per acre, and a solution to famine, pollution, and climate decline. But despite all this, most countries still treat cattails as weeds. Not because the science isn't clear, but because ecological abundance still threatens economic models built on scarcity. Cattails do something no cereal crop can do. They heal their ecosystem while growing. Their rhizomes hold soil in place. Their leaves filter runoff. Their roots absorb heavy metals. Their oxygen transfer system detoxifies ponds. Their biomass stores carbon deep in the mud for centuries. They produce protein-rich pollen, carbohydrate-rich rhizomes, edible shoots, medicinal roots, natural fibers, and fire-resistant building materials. And unlike almost every modern crop, cattails produce food year-round, spring shoots, summer pollen, autumn rhizomes, winter starch reserves. It is a 12-month food system requiring no planting, no plowing, no chemicals, it is the opposite of industrial agriculture, and that is exactly why it was erased. But nature didn't erase it. We did. Climate scientists recently ran models predicting future crop failures under rising temperatures. Corn, soy, and wheat, the pillars of the industrial food system fare poorly in a hotter, drier world. But cattails thrive. They expand. They produce more starch. They clean polluted water as they grow. They regenerate landscapes damaged by agriculture. And in indigenous communities across North America, a quiet revival has begun. Young people are harvesting cattail pollen again. Elders are teaching how to roast the roots. Wetland restoration projects are planting cattails intentionally, not as weeds, but as food. One elder said, when we tended the marsh, the marsh tended us. This wisdom, dismissed for centuries, is now resurfacing, not because it is ancient, but because it is true. We forgot that some ecosystems feed us more generously than any farm ever could. In the 1800s, American agricultural journals used a phrase that reveals the truth. Cattails are a problem crop because they compete with corn and require no management. A plant was labeled a problem because it fed too many people, too reliably, too freely, and threatened crops that needed fertilizer, labor, and industry. Cattails were not erased because they were weak. They were erased because they were too strong. 
because they created a world where famine was rare, food was local, and no one controlled the harvest. But what was considered a problem in the 19th century may be the solution in the 21st. Today, innovators are experimenting with cattail products, gluten-free cattail flour, cattail root starch for noodles, protein-rich pollen supplements, cattail insulation boards, cattail biofuel, cattail wetlands for filtering farm runoff, and cattail carbon sinks for climate restoration. In every case, cattails outperform their modern competitors naturally, silently, and without chemicals. They don't just grow, they protect. They don't just feed, they heal. They don't just exist, they remember. They remember a time before agriculture, before industry, before monocultures. A time when humans survived because landscapes were generous, not because farmers worked fields into exhaustion. And that memory is still alive in every golden pollen grain, every green shoot, every rhizome hidden beneath the mud. The story of the cattail is not a story of loss. It is a warning, a mirror, and a path forward. We replaced abundance with scarcity. We traded wetlands for fields. We labeled a miracle plant a weed. But the cattail never disappeared. It stood quietly at the water's edge, waiting, just like the forgotten root, the lost seed, the sleeping grain. For the moment, humanity would need it again. And that moment is now. If this vault opens something for you, subscribe to Green Vault and hit the notification bell. Every like and every share helps preserve this wisdom. The next vault opens soon.